This is now our second video looking at uh, inequalities at FP2. If you haven't seen the first video, please do watch that. What we're asked to solve now is x over x minus 1 is less or equal to 2x, where x cannot be equal to a 1. x can't be equal to 1 as it's set the denominator to 0. We discussed in the last video that we have to, if we're multiplying by um, a factor, it needs to be a positive factor. And the way that we can ensure it's positive is to square it. So what I'm going to do is multiply through by the denominator squared. So if I do that, I'm going to have x minus 1 squared multiplied by x over x minus 1 is now going to be less or equal to 2x multiplied by x minus 1 squared. So all I've done is squared this and multiplied through by it. So this will cancel off and we'll have x minus 1 multiplied by x is less or equal to 2x and then x minus 1. And that's squared. I'm going to set the left hand side to 0 and subtract this from both sides. So what I've now got is 2x x minus 1 squared minus x x minus 1. Okay, and that is greater or equal to 0. We're now going to factor this. So factoring it, I've got a common factor of x and x minus 1 in both. That comes out from x, x minus 1. We multiply that now by 2, and then we're still left with a linear factor of x minus 1. And then on this one, it's simply going to be now minus 1. So what we can now do is rewrite this, and we're going to have x, x minus 1. If I expand this, I'm going to get 2x minus 2 minus 1, which will give me now 2x minus 3. So at this point, I'm now going to draw the function just here, and we're going to have y is equal to x multiplied by x minus 1 multiplied by 2x minus 3. Our critical values are x is equal to 0, x is equal to 1, or x is equal to 3 over 2. So sketching this up, we now have a cubic graph, okay, and we should know the shape of this cubic graph. We know it's positive. We're going to have a point of intersection here at 0. We're going to have 1 at 1, and we're going to have 1 at 3 over 2. So there's the 1 at 1. We've got 1 at 3 over 2. So when we draw this, we're going to come up, we're going to come round, and then we're going to come up and out that way. So here are my critical values. And now what we're going to do is look. Going back here, I want to know where this is all greater or equal to 0. So let's consider the following. And I'll sketch this up. It's above or equal to 0 at this point right here. So in that part right there, it's above 0 or equal to 0. And then we've got all of this point right here. Okay, And it's going to be straight off now, right the way beyond from here. One uh, clear thing that we have to appreciate is that x cannot be equal to negative 1. And we discussed this in the last video. So what we can say then is x is going to be greater or equal to 0. Now, this one, we can't include 1 as 1 is not included. Therefore, it's strictly less than 1. Or x is going to be greater or equal to positive 3 over 2. And those are the values that satisfy that inequality. You cannot include minus 1, so we use a strict inequality. So x is between 0 and 1, 1 is not included, or x is equal or bigger than 3 over 2. OK, let's look at this one. This time, we're not given any um, uh, information that x cannot be equal to uh, 0, which is quite clear, and x cannot be equal to minus 1. We've got a strict inequality anyway, so in terms of the way we present our answer, it's not going to matter as such, but we still need to appreciate that x cannot be equal to negative 1 or 0. So this time I need to multiply through by x plus 1 squared, x squared. So what I'm going to have then is three lots of x plus 1 squared, x squared, over x plus 1. And you might want to cancel this, this phase out as you go with these. You might just want to put 3 x plus 1 x squared. And then what we're going to have now is 2. And then we're going to have 
x plus 1 squared x squared over x. So tidying it up, we're going to have 3. And this is probably where I suggest your work goes to after a while, but you're not considering having to cancel the, the two linear factors here. And then what we're going to have now is 2x, and then we're going to have x plus 1 squared. Okay, so what I'm going to do now is the following. I'm going to take this to the left-hand side. So we're going to have, and I'll just rewrite this, 3x squared, and then we can have x plus 1 minus 2x, and then we're going to have x plus 1 squared. And that is strictly less than 0. So what I'm now going to do is factor this. The highest common factor, we've got an x and an x plus 1 in both of these. That leaves me now needing 3x on, from this one, and then we're going to need minus 2. So we're going to have minus 2 for quantity x plus 1. And we want to know where that's strictly less than 0. So x, x plus 1. And then in here, we're going to have 3x minus 2x, which is going to give me 1x. And then we're going to have minus 2. So we end up with x minus 2. And that is going to be strictly less than 0. So setting our function, y is going to be equal to x, x plus 1, x minus 2. We study the critical values now of x equal to minus 1 x equal to 0 and x equal to 2. So we've got a positive cubic graph again. It doesn't always work out that they're cubics as you've seen in the first video. And then all we need to do is sketch this graph. So we're going to have now a point here to consider. And this point is going to be minus 1. We've got one at 0 and then we've got one at positive 2. So the cubic is going to look something like so. And we want to know where this is going to be strictly less than zero. So let's grab that information up and we can put that just here. Hopefully this will show up. It's strictly less than zero here and it's less than zero here. So we don't have to worry about inclusive, quite straightforward. We simply set this up now and we can say that uh, uh, now negative one is greater than x. Uh, why have I put x? Oh, I've put that wrong way around. Um, let's just put that correctly. So we can say now x is going to be less and strictly less than minus 1. That's that part right there. Or x is going to be strictly greater than naught, yet in turn strictly less than 2. And they are the regions that satisfy those inequalities. So as stated, I'm not looking for a critique on the different methods. We're just following one method and saying, how can we solve these um, inequalities when we don't know whether these are positive or negative? We simply square the denominators, multiply through by them, collect them up, we factor them, we uh, draw a little function, and then look at the critical values and decide where they are either greater or less than zero, or equal to both, in fact. So there we go, another couple of easier examples. We'll go on to some harder ones as we go.